Hello everyone, this is The Pretend Critic and thank you for watching my channel. So I just watched uh, Captain Marvel. Was it higher, bolder, or something we have never watched before? Before I go ahead and tell you what I thought about the movie, please hit that subscribe button to support my channel. Let me just get this out of the way, the elephant in the room. There has been a lot of controversy uh, in terms of this movie uh, because of the star. Uh, regardless of politics, I'm not going to go into this. This is a movie review, but I just wanted to do a disclaimer uh, before I go ahead and do a review. Um, I've been watching in the MCU or the Marvel Cinematic Universe for about 11 years now, uh, 20 to 21 movies. There are some movies that I've missed, but most of them I've watched. Uh, most of them are good to things that I even like. But I just wanted to do that disclaimer. Um, I don't care what Bree has said. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and discuss that in another video, but this is the movie itself how I felt about it and how I emotionally connected to it and what I thought technically worked and what technically didn't work. So here's my review of Captain Marvel and see where it goes, I guess. But let's go ahead and do the synopsis of it. Uh, it's about Carol Danvers, AKA Veers, V-R-S, because of the dog tag being, it's all in the trailer. Um, Loss, loses her uh, memory and all of a sudden supposedly she's half creed and half human because they infused her with creed power but it's kind of different you'll see in the movie without spoiling it you'll see the origin of uh, Captain Marvel or Carol Danvers and then all of a sudden they went on a mission uh, with the creed uh, force or and then you see that she gets lost and all of a sudden is trapped in earth to try to stop the infiltration of this scroll so that is where the story begins for captain marvel um the way my review works it it goes to four things one it's the acting acting the script directing which is cinematography choice of song and the next factor, how I felt about it. Was it viral? Was it something that, ooh, I really love? That is how I do it and at least try to be as objective as I can. And the subjective is, of course, the X factor is something that I felt or what was the emotional tie for me. So in terms of acting, the standout was Ben Mendelsohn. Uh, it was very good. He was really funny. As the squirrel leader, uh, he hit the lines and he was sometimes the comedic relief. Uh, the only problem with that one, I think it might be the script or I'm not sure if it's ad lib. It's just that it didn't feel like, it felt like he's been in Earth instead of how many X amount of time that he was supposed to be there. He knew everything. I don't know if it really transfers everything in terms of memory and everything like that. Does it transfer into all, even the characteristic, or is it just the memory? I don't know how that worked, but it kept kind of felt like he knew too much, even though it, he was just brand new. Samuel L. Jackson is still Samuel L. Jackson, uh, very charismatic, but a little bit different of a Nick Fury. Uh, you see it, he's more playful, he's not as serious as he is in other uh marvel movies and then the cat it wasn't for me there was nothing special about the cat uh it was i think samuel L. jackson that sold it more than the cat he's cute and then there was uh mary rambo uh the friend of carol danvers from the air force was really nice charismatic very funny the actress uh lassian lynch played and then there was jude law he didn't really do anything else. He was very, uh, you know, just there. Uh, there is a twist, so I, without spoiling it, it just didn't feel right. Annette Benning was Annette Benning, but it just, again, it, it, it was just more of a name recognition instead of anything like that. So acting-wise, it was from great 
to bad to even mediocre so an average of mediocre and of course we go back to Brie Larson um, there was some times that every almost most of her comedic or how she delivers the comedy or comedic line it just didn't feel right to me I mean I know she's an Oscar winner but she didn't win it for comedic uh, acting she got it from really stoic really sincere uh, acting and that's where she shines. When she was in her acting with Samuel Jackson, when she was uh, acting with Jude Law, she was very the subtle and the softest uh, acting. She was she excelled at, and you can see that she is an Oscar winner. But as Captain Marvel or some the persona of Captain Marvel, she just didn't feel right. She kind of felt like she wanted to be like Tony Stark or Robert Downey Jr. How she, he plays it but it just didn't feel right it just felt especially in the very end she just didn't take it too serious again the standout would be Ben Mendelsohn and then Samuel Jackson Samuel Jackson Clark Gregg uh, Coulson really there's nothing else to mention he was just there for eye candy or anything else for Easter egg purposes uh, Ronan the Accuser nothing it was he, again he's he was just there um, in terms of Maria Rambo, I would have wanted her, the Shauna Lynch, I think is her name, to be Captain Marvel instead of Brie Larson. She would have played it better, and that's the problem there. Um, the way that Brie Larson played it, I can picture somebody else. Not like Captain America, I picture Chris Evans, Iron Man, I picture Robert Downey Jr., but I can picture somebody else as Captain Marvel. So about the story. The story was haphazard. Uh, there was a buddy cop movie somewhere there. There was a mystery somewhere there. There was an amnesia uh, covert somewhere there. So it would try to be born, you know, all the 90s Terminator 2, but it just didn't work. Um, it, it's something just the exec execution was not there. And it just felt flat for me in terms of story wise. The story just. Okay, and then the next one is directing. Directing, it was choppy. I know it was done by two people, and I think that might have hurt it a lot because it was different things, and it was dark. And I know why they did that, because the darker it is, the better the special effects looks, even though if it does not look bad. There it goes. The cinematography was really choppy. Editing was choppy. Uh, some of the special effects was not that great. Um, but the de-aging of Samuel L. Jackson was great. And the way that she got the power, I was kind of like, okay, so human beings can withstand, even though it's secondary. If you watch it, you'll know. And of course, how Nick Fury lost his, you know. <laughs> so the X Factor, how I felt about it. I really wanted to like it, but it feels like right now, it just felt like a filler. Movie was just a filler to bridge us from infinite war to endgame and to show hey this character exists but not exploring it which felt empty um, and if she is the next phase it feels like it's not earned it's gonna make money no matter what and I, I like it because as a nerd I want them to make money I, would it be DC or Marvel because you know why if this makes money, the next one will make more money and it will keep on going. They're just changing everything that the 21 or 20 movies of Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe so they can shoehorn her in to uh, Endgame and make us believe that, hey, this is the next phase of the Marvel era. It is She is going to be the leader. This was something that they just wanted to fill in and say, this would be the next one. Marketing showed that this would be something that you would need to watch. So is it a matinee? Should you pay full price or should you just wait to stream it? Depends on where you are. Uh, for me, because I have been invested in MCU, I thought, you know, let's go ahead and watch it and it will tell me what will happen in Endgame. It did not. So if that is the case that you would want to you want to watch it that way, I would say just stream it. Just wait to, for it to stream because it did not give anything away 
in terms of Endgame. It didn't even show anything. Again, I don't care if it spoiled it or whatnot, but it felt like the way that they were telling us that this would be an usher. The only thing that it ushers is it shows that Captain Marvel is an overpower and feels like she's going to be that one punch, one punch man and just one punch uh, Thanos and boom, it's done. It's gone. Just like how easy it is. And hopefully that's not it. Because for me, as someone that has invested time in it and as a fan of movies and as a fan of the universe, it would just feel unearned, anticlimactic for me if that does happen. But if you do love Marvel and you want to watch every Marvel just to support them, I would say matinee. Um, it doesn't need to be just seen in the biggest screen. And as a general audience, it just depends. It depends on you. If you just go ahead and want to be entertained, it does have some entertaining stuff. And it does have some entertaining, I would say go ahead and still watch it matinee. Matinee. So what did you guys think about Captain Marvel? Have you guys watched it? How many times have you watched um, all the MCU or Marvel Cinematic Universe? Leave a comment down below and like always, please hit that subscribe button to support my channel and go ahead and push that subscribe button. And like always, thank you. That's a wrap.